So now in this video, if we need a three input AND gate, what that means is we will need three high input signals for the output to be high. If any of them are low, or all of them low, whatever, but uh, if at least one of them is low, the output is low. If we need one of these, a three input AND gate, but all we have are two input AND gates, such as what's on the 7408, I'm going to use the 74HC08, we can just combine them, like you see here. So we'll have the output of one of the AND gates, and one of the inputs just getting a regular signal, the other input getting a signal from the output of another AND gate. So we will need both inputs to be high for the output to be high, and thus the input to be high. And then uh, once they're all high, then the output will be high. Now, in an older diagram that I used before, we can see the pin layout for the 7408. So again, we're using the HC version, the high-speed CMOS version, but the pin layouts are the same, no matter the uh, version, if it's a 7400 series integrated circuit. So there's quad, there's four AND gates there, each one of them with two inputs, as you can see right there, pretty straightforward. We have to power the integrated circuit. Five volts is probably the best to use whenever you got uh, one of these circuits. I always check the data sheet though, if you can use other voltages. But in any case, positive side of the supply, five volts to pin 14, VCC, and the uh, negative side of the supply, ground. That's our zero volt reference point right there. But other than that, the pin layout for the AND gates are the same. We got two inputs above the output, and then the same for that one. These are the two we're gonna use. These two, we're not gonna use them. You are gonna see though that their inputs, I'll have 13 and 12 to ground, and then 10 and 9 to the positive side of the power supply. That puts a voltage on them so that the output doesn't oscillate. And uh, that's really what you want to do whenever you have unused inputs. And here we are on the board. So we have to power it. Power's off right now. That's why neither LED is lit. And you can see we got jumpers going to the uh, positive side of the supply there. And then the negative there to the uh, inputs. So the inputs just look at voltage. They don't let current go through, so you can attach them directly to a supply rail. That's all we're gonna do with the inputs in this video, in fact. Now the output here, when the output is high, I have a 220 ohm resistor protecting a red LED, long lead anode, short lead cathode, you can see it goes to ground there. So when it's high, it connects as close to the positive supply as it can, and the red LED will light up. When the output is low, you can see we got a blue LED here, positive supply to the anode. Remember, you gotta put it in the right way for it to light up. Then we got the cathode, one kilo ohm resistor. I'm using about four times the resistance because LEDs, uh, blue LEDs just naturally get brighter than red LEDs. So we got more resistance so it doesn't get overwhelmingly bright. But in any case, when the output's low, then we'll have a path to ground right there and the uh, blue LED will light up. Now we're going to uh, turn the power on. I'll zoom back so you can see that. So the supply is on, but the output is off. Now the output's on. So now we can see that oscillation, which is a problem with the floating inputs. And so all we have to do is get one of them not floating anymore. Let's do this uh, bottom one. So you can see we got the output tied to the input right there. And uh, so there we go. And I thought that was to the negative. I meant for them all to be negative. But in any case, there you can see once we give a low input, then we have a low output right there. And so it doesn't matter that those two are floating anymore because we have a low input that guarantees a low output as long as one, at least one of them is low. Now we're gonna work our way up to making them high. And again, the output won't be high until they're all high. And when I remove the uh, red one, you're gonna see that oscillation right there. That's the problem with leaving the inputs floating. And so usually you got a pull up or a pull down resistor, but uh, we're just doing a quick demonstration here. And uh, there you can see, as long as all the inputs are high, then the output's high. Otherwise, if any of them are low, then the output is low. Doesn't matter which one or how many are low, it's uh, low. So that's it for taking a couple, two input AND gates to make a three input AND gate. All three of them have to be high for the output to be high. Hope you enjoyed the circuit. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate Patreon if you can. I got links down in the description. I'll see you in the next video.